I get that it's uh, the, having the love for it. I mean, it doesn't really feel like work. No, no. Um, and so I had, you know, my next run of auctions all lined up. This is 2010. That was about to launch, and I, I decided to give it a shot at, at fixed prices instead. So I, I edited three, four, five thousand. And you were using all your past pricing plus maybe some pricing guides. And... No, and, and so that was actually that's one of the other things is. At night, when I wasn't making a listings, <clears throat> I would just search eBay in the comic section, blank. I'm not searching, I'm not searching any specific thing. Right. So just at that time, you could do it. I don't know if you could do it anymore. So you search within the comics category, and then you click on the sold listings. So you can see what everything everything that's sold. For. Yeah. So I do that from time to time. So I probably should do it more often. Oh, dude, all the time. Yeah. So at the time. You know, I was into using Overstreet as a guide, and now we have some real price data, real time. Yeah, these are, this is how all the guys come up with the top ten. So what you know, yeah, the percentage yeah. of things. So there was this sold. huge disparity on a right. lot of stuff, and I was like, "All right, so Overstreet says it's worth two bucks. <laughs> what did it sell for twenty five on eBay? All right, so yeah. all right, that one log that one away. So I just to do that at night, like you know, studying more pricing, just like I was doing when I was a kid, right. reading you know." what this stuff is worth and, and what sets it apart. Looking at the description, like, all right, so what are they included in that description that made it get bid up to right. 25 when Overstreet says it's worth two bucks? Two bucks. Yeah. <clears throat> then, you know, then I go looking for comic stores that go by Overstreet. <laughs> you know, that and you buy can, there to resell. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, what they call it? So that was some, yeah, yeah, so that was some of your uh, sourcing. Was yeah. that the, the main part of your sourcing was other comic shops? So you're having shops. to do some traveling because there's... Wasn't a ton around. He's still doing, you know, comic shops, conventions um, to to meet people, and that's the other thing. You know, you got you got to meet people, and you all share a common interest. So right. it's not that hard to strike up a conversation with. No, and they're, well, guys they're got stuff they don't guys, like to. You know? Yeah, they got stuff they don't like to sell or don't want to sell or yeah. or they're having a hard time in their area selling. Right. Yeah. I mean, I buy from a lot of dealers. I buy indies from a lot of dealers who just don't want to deal with independents. Mm -hmm. They get them in collections. They put them in long boxes, and after they get five or six of them, they give me a call and they're like, "Hey, come get this." Stuff. So those were my focus indies. Yeah. Because I'm just starting out. Yeah, you know, there's huge sellers on there, and I'm just a little guy. Yeah. Okay, so. What sets you apart? Pricing, service, selection. So I could fight on pricing a little bit, but I couldn't match them on selection. They had enormous Massive, uh, yeah. yeah, but what I could focus on was if I focus on independent books. The niche. Yeah. You know, I'm maybe one of four guys trying to sell it. Whereas if I'm selling Amazing Spider-Man 381. Yeah. Everyone. There's a zillion people trying to sell up. Yeah. So how do you stand out of that, you know, when you're just starting off? You get buried. You get buried. You do. I don't you I do. don't even like the hot books that come out, I don't put on eBay. I I can sell those in my store. There's plenty of guys that sure. come through and I'll give them twenty to forty percent off because I won't have to sell it on eBay mm -hmm. and ship it and all that. Um, yep. what I put up on is all the weird stuff I get. If I get any weird stuff I put it on there. Well you, you know, for a local shop you kinda have to because what's the likelihood that in your radius Right somebody's looking for that independent book. Right. You know what I mean? That some guy in Wisconsin wants. <laughs> and it's like right. one of only 10 people that are actively looking for Looking it. for it because yeah. he, he has to fill out his, it's number four, like number ones that are like the first appearance on Indies is still a little bit everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to have like, to stuff it in their collection just in case it takes off in the future. But like issue four, issue eight, yeah, like of some that. independent from the eight, no, nobody's looking for that. Well, yeah. there's 10 guys looking for that. Yeah, yeah it's a small niche, but. But I could, and now I have a fighting chance. Yeah. I'm one of four guys or, four, or five sellers trying to sell that book. So, right. so independents were kind of like my thing. And I really studied those hard at night on, on eBay and looking at pricing. And then I would go to the conventions and 
and I would mostly just focus on the indie section. Well, sorry, Marvel for right. my own collection. Collection. And indies, indies to, to sell. That. And DC was like, yeah, I don't want any. And the indies back <laughs> then, the indies back then were mostly in the twenty-five cent box, oh, ten yeah. cent box. That was the other thing. The Long box for twenty bucks. Buy-in was low. Yep. Yeah, buy-in yep. was low, so your profit margins were high. Which yeah. is, you know, yeah, when, you, so, when you're in this business, that's the one of the most favorite things to have. High profit, profit margin, margin, that helps, yeah. yeah. So, you know, there was a guy, his name was Glenn Campbell. Yeah, that's where I got those books from today. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, he... Uh, he's still your guy. He's, he's still, still one of my guys, yeah. He, he would put out books at conventions for like 50 cents, but he wanted to move books, so he'd have a way cheaper price if you bought a thousand. Right. So I'd show up there with like three, four empty lawn boxes and it's like all right buddy this is where i am for the whole convention and i would just be sitting there picking books picking right. books and then you know you you develop a relationship with the dude you, you know you know what each other likes you yeah you know, because i'm sitting there for hours you know i'm gonna yeah. be chatting with the dude talking to him about stuff and uh, where is he sourcing this though so he's still providing they, yeah. providing you with thousands is, of yeah. books he there's so many different niches in the comics ecosystem oh yeah but he's out there hunting every day and he's going to dealers and like hey you know you got two boxes over there let's let me buy those uh, you got four over there that's just been sitting since the last time i was here let's do a deal on I, that. I can't believe what i've bought from other dealers right and that's and and i'm buying it from him he's another dealer right. so we would end up talking and say you know hey when you're done with this at the convention why don't you just sell that yeah. leftover to me so i'll take the scraps basically right you know just starting off, it's low investment. Sure. He wants to get rid of it. I'm sure there's something left in there I can make right. something out of. So, you know, start picking up stuff that way. You know, talking to the dealers and say, hey, you know, convention season's over, dump your old stock. Because nobody wants to come to the same convention and see the same stuff. Again. Same stuff? No. So they want to get rid of that stuff too. So it works, it works well for everybody involved. Right. Um, it's just a good way to source a lot of inventory quickly. Because I don't want to go out there hunting digging around like what he's doing it's it, that's a time investment you know he's on right. the road looking talking to shops sometimes you go spend hours and you then nobody wants to buy anything or oh, and you do sometimes you go out sourcing and nobody wants to sell anything yeah everybody's that's holding right. that's what I meant. that's what i meant to say but yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's so to me my time is best spent making listings so i have right you know, the inventory for it so that's, that's the great thing about that but having the retail shop, people just bring it right through my door. Yeah, that I don't have. That's uh, one. That's one of the aspects I'm lack, lacking in. It's, right. It's you know just new inventory popping up. Like hey, just out of nowhere. Some, buy some today, rando. But, yeah, yeah, some rando. Yeah. Yeah. And right now, collections are coming through the door every day. Not all comics, because you know I do a lot of different SKUs. But we are getting. We got. I don't know. Uh, Fifty and sixty-four carts today. Cool. So, yeah, so like collections are coming through the door daily. I think a little people are scared about the economy right now and they're, sure. they know the market's kind of at a high it's end and top. it is about to change and they want to get out before it changes, time. right? So, but like I have a way that I buy that I think I'm safe even through really bad times, so. I think that's key. You don't want to yeah. be chasing the hot books. No, no, I buy, I buy every, I always tell people I like, I don't cherry pick. I buy your collection or I don't buy it. Mm -hmm. We either can come to a price on everything or nothing. Um, it's just, that's mine. That's, I know guys that will go through a I collection. I give them the option. I give pick them out the, the books. And I say, hey, look, I can cherry pick this and leave you with garbage. Right, well, that's the, what's the thing I say? Or, and that's, I'll tell myself I don't think. What do you want yeah. to, it's up to you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll you price what do you want to lug? I'll, I can get like eight books out of here and you can lug all the rest home. Mm -hmm. And you'll get a lot for these eight books. Yeah. But. Then you're lugging that eight boxes home to dump somewhere else. I've had people up, uh, go either way. Yeah. I've had people just they're like just a lot pull of people up a bring me books. a lot of people bring me collections that have been picked someplace else. That's frustrating. And I am it is, but I'm also fine with that too because oh, they totally leave am. a lot of good stuff it, behind. It's frustrating. They're picking like the few hundred dollar books out of there, and it's frustrating because when you're offering them a price, then it right. seems low. Yes. Because there's not the good stuff there to make it. Up. Right. Well, I explain that to them. I, I go I know, like the, the it, runs there and we get like to the good spiel. book. Yeah, we get to the good book and I'm like, oh, hmm, odd that like you have 30 in a row <laughs> yeah, but and you're missing this one, this one book. Yeah. But I, I uh, there's a, yeah, there's a way to get there. And then when they know that I know, 
it actually usually smooths like it makes it really easy because now they just want to get rid of them mm -hmm. they have no attachment anymore the stuff yeah. that they knew was worth something yep. is gone so the rest of For the me, stuff the is just is, a problem is i i don't like dealing with collectors because oh, they have that attachment yeah i much prefer to deal with dealers yeah i don't get the you know always the gajillion key books in it yeah but it's a problem for you that's sitting in your store yep okay you're ready to, to move it right so you're gonna sell it at a fair price yeah and uh i'm cool with that i don't i don't want to be you know explaining to them you know they, they think it's worth this well but they don't know the process of selling it and how long you sit on it and how it doesn't ever actually sell sometimes right you know, it's it, it's it's tough and i don't want to have to go into that salesman stick and that's kind of what i didn't like in the Kelly business the sales yeah i don't want to have to get into that it's like you know i'm just gonna this is my price here you go yeah yeah there might be some negotiations but as far as that it's not i'm not going to give you a song and dance kind of thing and you don't have to when you're doing it with dealers because they know what you they want to get and, and and it's almost like a for a collector it's like it's almost like bad news i don't like that type of vibe either it's like right. uh, you know because they think it's I just, worth this and I'm i like, just gave some of that it's worth this and they're like what do you mean it's only worth it? i'm like i'm like i'm sorry i just like, gave some of that bad news to uh, to someone today on a on a doll collection uh because i even i'll even buy that if it's at the right price okay. but like they were at they were above market so i don't know if they were talking about what they bought it for or whatever but like we were so very far apart mm -hmm. i thanked them for giving me the opportunity and said just that we wouldn't be interested so yeah it's just it's I just don't it, like it, that you feel experience. that it's kind of the pit yes yeah your i like stomach. to avoid that and just deal with dealers so what made you just like you knew you started getting a lot of books you needed that yeah. you needed some place to put yeah. them so you decided to build well no 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 so uh my house completely Filled. Bumped, filled with comic books in every little corner and nook sure. and cranny. Um, I'd have house parties and I remember just pictures of people <laughs> gathering and then in this corner there's like you know, a stack of 12 lawn boxes. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I decided to do it full time, I remember you know, I moved to a different house and I had a garage then. Oh, okay. I racked out the garage with stuff like this, which was nice. Um, but Big step up. Even that couldn't contain contain it. When my wife moved in, she's like, every room in this house, you know, which is larger than the first one, like every room <laughs> has comics in it. Like this is this is nuts. Uh, so eventually, yeah, they have to leave. Yeah, <laughs> go somewhere. Um, <clears throat> my dad has a business where he sells trucks. So yep. he owned a, a lot with a an office on it that wasn't in use. He was using the parking lot. So he was like, why don't you, you know, give it a shot, just bring your books up there. So I was there for a couple of years, maybe more than that. Just grinding away, making listings by hand. And uh, yeah, eventually, I, friends would come and I'd, I'd ask them if they wanted to, to do some sorting for me. You know, because you only have so much time and when you're starting off, you're trying to oh, yeah. make as many listings as you can. I've had so many customers work for me. <laughs> For like a, a couple of weeks or a couple of days, because mm -hmm. uh, it just gets it gets so far past you. You're like all the, well, especially with the new books every week. Yeah. Right. Getting the fi them filed away, um, you know, after six months, because so we move them three months and then six months, and then they, once they're a year old, then we try to put them put them away in the box they're supposed to be, and it gets away from you. Well, plus in you know, a retail shop, you're just sitting there entertain customers all yeah, day like, all day long it's kind of like a, something that you you almost sign on for unwittingly like oh man i, I and it's a really i would just be you know having conversations all day and getting nothing done yes it's a very community-based business and you are talking about comics for sometimes hours mm -hmm. for that person to pick up two new yeah. books yeah right and you've yeah. got nothing else done yeah. So yeah, it's that was one of the things I remember. Uh, you know, I was talking to my dad. I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna you know do my own thing," and that's like he he asked like, "Which direction are you are you gonna try to open a store?" And he said that exact same thing. He's like, "You're gonna talk to people for an hour, <laughs> two hours, and they're gonna be like, oh, okay, thanks,' and then buy a four dollar comic." Yeah, or not buy anything. Or not buy anything. I didn't. Anything. I didn't yeah. have anything come in this week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's. Uh, a daunting uh, idea there. Yeah. I don't know if I wanted to go that route. So uh, it just kept with the online um, and just, you know, online, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just in the zone making listings as fast right. as I can. And then, you know, hire some people and uh, hand the sorting 
part off to them so that I don't have to worry about that aspect because that's extremely time consuming. It is, it um, is, and painful. <laughs> I mean, I love yeah. digging through the new I, stuff that I comes in. I love looking through a box that has not been sorted though. Sorted, it's, yeah. That's still fun to do, but I can only do that so so much before I'm like, all right, you gotta get back to that to real work. <laughs> But that is fun, you know. What's Absolutely, the, what, it's like Christmas. Treasure, it's treasure in yeah, this box. treasure, treasure uh, hunt. Of course, that's a blast. So you know, uh, hiring people to do sorting and then eventually packing, which that was. Um, that's another tedious, terrible task. It is, but when you it's know important. how to pack in 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 the online business, it's it's crucial. Yeah. So handing that responsibility off to somebody else. That's like, oh, are they going to make sure the book is secured the right way or right. back the right way? And it's, uh, yeah. it's tough initially for me to pass that off. It's tough for me to pass everything off, actually, right. initially. Because I'm like, I'm going to, you know, is it going to make mistakes? See, are they gonna, our gonna, children. These yeah, are our children. Yes, like, these exactly. businesses are our children. It's yeah. very difficult to pass stuff off. And, sure. Yeah. Um, you have to kind of pull the reins in on not micromanaging, but then still <laughs> managing, right? It's tough. It, it is tough. And uh, Joe, actually... He had ended up selling the restaurant um, that he had created, and I asked him if he wanted to, you know, come do some stuff with me while he was just figuring out his next step. Right. So he would come in, and uh, he's a he's a smart dude. So I felt comfortable handing off a lot. Right. To him, you know, and and then he's got experience with running a business. Right. With managing people. And the importance of, of details and stuff like that. Yeah. All of that. You know, that I don't have to explain. Right. You know, so it's like, oh, this is nice to have someone else here that, you know, has a head on their shoulders and, and can, I feel like I can let him just do his own thing sometimes and, and I don't have to be looking over his shoulder. Right. So, you know, he could manage the other people that I started to hire a little bit here or there and without me having to do all that. Right. Which, again, it just lets me focus more on making listings, making listings. And when you're doing it by hand, you have to be able to make a lot of listings. Right. So I was accumulating, I think it was up to 14,000 listings at the time that I had created by hand that had not yet sold. Wow. Um, and, and at the time, eBay's number of listings were plummeting. Not plummeting, but they were going down. Down. It was yeah. a down, downturn. Mm -hmm. And I was on, on the rise, so business was going pretty well. Proportionally speaking, right. And then eBay was sending out these deals. Oh, ten thousand free listings. Free listings for this yeah. month. Yeah, yeah. Five. You had them ready. Listings. Mine, no, mine were already up, up. Right. So it didn't help me. But all it did was it bring in every so many other people to make yeah. listings. Sure. So now, you know, they were on the downturn. Now they're back up on the rise, and I can't keep up. Right. With making listings. To have a decent part of the market share, so I start to get, you know, frustrated. Sure. Yeah, like I'm married now. I have a kid now, <clears throat> and I just see I, I'm going to be eclipsed. Right. There's no, it, it's not going to work. So I start trying to figure out how do I make listings automated, almost. And at the time, I was selling on Atomic Avenue, so I was using a program called Comic Base. Okay. So any, I was mostly selling sets and weirder independent type stuff on eBay. Any Marvel stuff I would list on Comic Base. I would enter into Comic Base, which then sent your inventory up to Atomic Avenue if you wanted to sell, sell it. Yeah. Right. So it was I almost this, like a, it was almost like a collection, uh, a program that kept your collection. It is. It, that's his primary focus. Focus, right? You to catalog your collection, but it has the added bonus of you listing to... for free your collection for sale. Oh. Or you can maintain a separate database of stuff you want to sell right. and list that for free. So for me, like, it's there's no cost initially to, to list. Right. But at the time, eBay was a pay per listing sure. per, per month. Yeah. So like I had, you know, you have to manage your costs. And that was a, an interesting opportunity to list everything I had on Atomic Avenue um, that I didn't want to make a listing for. Right. So, you know, I had dollar books, two dollar books in, in there. But I was like, how do I get those? listings onto eBay when they're like, hey, here's 10,000 free listings. Yeah, yeah, 20, yeah. 10,000 free listings. And I, I exported the data and I remember it was missing a bunch of stuff that I needed. So I called up the owner of Comic Base and I said, what could, you know, can I offer you some money to to add this option into the program? 
<laughs> and at the time, he's like, I don't, I'm not looking to make it easier for you for, to, for eBay. Right. For eBay to make more money. Right. He's like, but well, you could probably break the system somehow. So, I'm not much of a programmer. Right, right. <laughs> but, uh, I was kind of, you know, deflated. And I was like, well, I can't do that. So then I'm just, you know. But you were willing to pay him something. I was so. willing to pay him something. So, uh, you know, I, I, I found a, a programmer and I asked him, I, I told him what I needed to, to, to get out of the database. And he was able to whip up a, a program that did that. So now I had a, a, a database export that I had all those listings in. And, and eBay has a program called, at the time it was called File Exchange. Yeah. But you could I used to use that. manipulate the data by creating lots of different columns right and you could create listings off of that off of a spreadsheet so i had some prior spreadsheet knowledge because i was joe and i were making these spreadsheets on how to you know do formulas and all that right so i made this very basic spreadsheet of okay well I'll plug it in here and then through formulas it'll set pricing and it'll set um you know cat store categories and stuff like that so i just i remember talking to Joe and I said, you know, we're going to list you know, 30,000 listings this month. And and it's great because like we have a different mindset. So he's like, okay, so how do we process that? What if the, you know, what if uh, 2,000 <laughs> sell? Like, you know, right. I don't think about any of that. It's just like, I just, you know, it it's unsustainable the way it's going now. So this right. is, a, you know, we need so to find an opportunity. We need to make this work. So, make an opportunity. A lot of times, that's how the dynamic is with Joe and I. It's like, all right, this is what I want to accomplish. And then he, he'll try to ground me and be like, well, you know, we got to do this, we got to do this, and this. And I'm like, ah, I didn't want to think about any of that, you know, but thank you for, you know, for bringing it up to me right. because uh, they're all valid points. Right, right, right. But I was, I was determined. I, I'm like, we're not, whatever it is, we'll do it. I'll stay. All night to ship it out or whatever it may be we're gonna have we're gonna, we're gonna give it a shot so we gave it a shot and i remember a book called psycho duck sold day one and i was like oh, this actually might work this whole you know, selling singles on, on ebay ebay yeah um through mass producing it no way right. no way to do it through you know, it's not by, worth your while for a dollar or two dollar book. No, it's not worth doing that. But if you can automate the process, um, there's a customer out there for everything. A hundred percent. Ask for every seat. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So Psycho Duck just stuck out. I'm like, who would ever buy that? But someone, someone wanted Psycho Duck. Yeah. So that was the next focus. It's like, okay. How can we get more listings? And we're going to, I'm just, now this is the new focus. We're not, I'm not focusing on manual listings as much anymore. I'm going to try to focus more on putting them into comic base and running through this program here and just churning out listings. Uh, so that's, you know, that's kind of the main part of where it is now is like, we need to just keep, keep taking an inventory to create more listings. Right. So speaking of that is, um, how many listings do you have up at a time? Now there's uh, like 135,000 listings. 135 yeah. less. And, and th how many uh, different platforms? Oh, yeah. So initially it was just eBay. eBay yeah. and Atomic. And Atomic, yeah. But um, it's all, it's very monotonous to, to delist them between the two. Right. They don't sync at all. Um, very shortly after I, I expanded it and had now 40,000 listings, um, Amazon called me up and they said, we're opening a, a category for comics and we want you to be on there. And, um, at first I remember thinking like, ah, I don't, I don't want to do this, but, um, you know, you just got to look at every opportunity that's presented itself to you Absolutely. And, and really think about it because you don't get opportunities all the time. No, so, you don't get companies calling you or that come yeah. make, come make money from us mm -hmm. through us. Well, you're making yeah. them money also, but uh... yeah, actually that's one of the other things. So when eBay was was generating all those listings for other people, free right. listings, I remember just sitting there thinking, like, what was me? Right. Um, Here I'm I was the making victim. them money. They're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're I was doing them right, you. and then they yes. they come along. 
yeah. how, how can we give him more competition? And, right, exactly. Instead of, how yeah. can we pump him up more? Yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of that initially. Yeah, absolutely. Human nature. Sure, but if I just wild in productive. that, uh, business isn't going to be great because of this. Right. Sure, I feel good about it. It's not my own fault. But eventually you just go out of business. Yeah. So where does that leave you? So that that's... Um, Pivoting. Yeah, but realizing, you know, the victim mentality isn't going to... It's not going to serve your interests. No. You know, yeah, it's, it's good to feel bad about yourself or the situation. Right. And it feels good to, to feel that way at first, but eventually you have to get out of that. Absolutely. Bump. My my philosophy is, is if, if you take on that victim mentality, everybody victimizes you. Yeah, sure. It's just, yeah. oh, this is a guy we can take advantage of mm -hmm. because he's a victim. Yep. Tells us that every day. Yep. How, oh, woe is me, this has happened and that happened. Yeah. yeah. You have to, now, everybody, it happens to everybody. We get into it, but then you got to get out of it fast. Then you got to start thinking, yeah, like right. you said, pivot. And, and you know, it's, owning a small business, you have every opportunity to do whatever you want. Right. So I know you've talked about, like, writing a business plan and all that, but, like. Oh, it's still got to be fluid. It is important, but you ha you can't be rigid in it. No. It, whatever opportunities are presented to yourself, you, you kind of have to sneak along with, with what comes your way. So my magic story it was like I opened a comic book shop and they got, kids came in and like, oh, can you get magic? I looked and uh, a guy I was buying baseball cards from had magic boxes. I said, yeah, all right, I'll have them next week. <laughs> Bought some magic boxes and now I'm a magic store that sells comic books, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, but if you were like, you know, nah. Yeah, we're just please, doing I don't want your business. <laughs> right. You, 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 you have to look at every opportunity. Every opportunity. But you also have to be hunting for opportunities. Absolutely. And, and uh and ways to, to grow things. Have you ever seen Tommy Boy? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the father gives us some advice in there. He says, uh, in business, you're either growing or you're dying, right? Dying. No third direction. Right. So um, that's so, you know, innovating and trying to think of new ideas and, and, and how to better what you're doing is, is crucial. So, you know, when this Amazon opportunity presented itself and I was like, no, nah, that's, I don't know if I want to do that. Like, why wouldn't I want to do that? You know, right. Amazon has an enormous, you know, enormous. marketplace. So, yeah. All right, let's figure out how that works. So, and then that's where Joe comes into play. And he's very good with like, okay, here's how we can match things up. You know, we'll try to figure out ways to to sync the listings between each other using identifiers. Right. And uh, so, putting our heads together with that and with the eBay download, Amazon has a similar type of thing, or spreadsheet has a similar type of spreadsheet where you have to specify the different fields and right. all that, and they can upload a gazillion listings if you want. So now we had listings on Amazon and eBay that were matched. So when one sold... On, it would pull it off the other one. On eBay, well, it, there's, there's a little there's bit of... System. It's, it, the system, we, we would know which item sold on which platform, right? but then you'd have to manually delist it from the other, which is... And the issue is that you've had the same issue that I have, but you could have been having a bigger issue is that if you have, if a book gets hot that day, you know, if they mention it on, um, you know, some top 10 list or mm -hmm. something and everybody runs directly to eBay and Amazon oh, yeah. to buy all the issues. Yep. Both gone. Both gone and yeah. you only have one. So. That happens sometimes. Sometimes the, the buyer is very understanding about it. Yeah. A lot of times they're they like, very oh, when you're just holding, why is it always the hot issue that it happens to? I'm like, that's how this works. That's, like, it's, everybody right. wants it. And it's it's been there it. for six months. If you could have bought it last month, uh, no problem. No problem. Yeah. You would have got it uh, exactly. before the other guy. But sure. you waited until you saw it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Which has been a boon for the business. It's great. Uh, I don't want to. That is great. great. Like uh, all the it, knowledge that's passed on through all these channels about comics is really, uh, you know, made it made it even more profitable. That community was very lacking when I was first starting. At month. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it is nice to see it now. It's nice to see this information getting out there. It's nice to find people that want to know the information. Right. But you know, when I was starting, nobody, nobody even realized this. Not nobody, but the dealers didn't realize the disparity between the eBay pricing and the Overstreet pricing. No. So, and and there was nobody out there on YouTube really being like, "Hey, this is the book that you should be hunting for." Right. Right. And then so, this is what the prices it's been selling for. Like, there's a lot of them right. do market. Uh, they do it on the tails of the flip side, they do the market report. So books mm -hmm. that you wouldn't think of and, hey, here's some of the sales, like, you know, this might be in your collection and you don't even know it has any value. Yeah, it's not on your radar. Right. Yeah, you don't know what's happening. No, so we're on, now we've got two platforms. You're so on, yeah, we're, yeah, we're on, well, we're three, but Atomic yeah. isn't synced. Um, 
And Joe just, you know, goes to town thinking about, because he's the one handling the matching of right, the, right, the data. Right. So he's like, oh, this is very time consuming. Sure. So he goes to work, you know, teaching himself how to make macros, which are like programs that are created inside the Excel spreadsheet. Right. Which kind of automates a lot of the process. So he could say, all right, uh, this sold on eBay, it's this code, it, and we have an, sorry, and we have another one, or it sold and we don't have any more. So now the system knows, okay, leave it up right. on Amazon or take it off of Amazon. Right. So he's building this out from, from scratch himself, which is cool. Um, so that helps to really get things done. It, you know, sure. You can, the more you can automate it as far as listing creation and maintenance, it's just, it's key. It's yeah. Key. So, and now we have this database and we have, through his knowledge, the ability to match and sync on a daily basis the inventory. Now, all right, what other marketplaces are out there? Let's, let's, let's try all of them. You know, like right. I said, you, you got to go with the opportunity sure. and give it a shot. And we've tried many <laughs> that go nowhere. But you, you gotta give it a risk, you know. You, you put your effort in. Yeah, you, know, you, you spend so much time figuring out their system, right? Because they're, they're, it's not like you just it's take money this, spent. It's money. It spent. is. It's time and, and, and energy right. that could be spent making listings sure. or doing other things. So now we have this database that we, once we figure out how the next input works, we can change it to work with their system. Right. So we've tried, you know. Uh, Sears, Newegg, you know, places that you wouldn't necessarily think would be selling comics, right. but the opportunity is there. Is it worth it? Let's give it a shot. We don't know right. until we try it. Bonanza. Um, is Bonanza still around? Yeah, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They've made 14 sales in the past <laughs> year. Uh, so the next one that called me up was Hip Comic. Yeah. And they were like, we're launching this, this marketplace. We want you on there. And I go on there, and they've got, you know, I don't know, 20, 30,000 listings. Right. I'm like, I'm like, this, there's no real appeal there for me to, to jump on your system. Sure. You know, I like the concept. Right. But um, I don't know if I want to put the time into it. And they say, well, you know, we offer a sync. You don't have to do anything. You just push the button. Push the button. Yeah. So it will bring your eBay listings in. So, right. Um, and then go take them off. Because you, you turned me on to them. I use them also. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, all right, so, okay, that I can't pass that up. Right. You know, let's do that. So, it, it was magic in the beginning. They've had some problems in, the uh, sink, you know, working the sink out but, recently. But, uh, yeah, initially, the first four or five years of it was, was awesome. You know, yeah. Perfect sync between the, the two marketplaces. So, you know, Hip Comic, uh, Amazon, eBay. Uh, we've tried Wish Out. Like I said, Sears, Bonanza, Newegg. Who's the new, the um, new big one, new big dog that you're going to be on? No, we're trying to get into Walmart right now. Um, I don't have to worry about it, which is nice. Joe's very, right, very right. into it, working on it right now. Um, he's got a great head for that, so he's. You ever see like uh, the Hangover where Alan's yeah. looking around and you just see all the numbers floating? <laughs> that's how like I look at, I'll look over at Joe and I feel like that's what's going on. He's like this column over here, this row over here. So, so although you say you got one hundred thirty thousand, one hundred thirty thousand, one hundred thirty-five thousand uh, listings. Yeah, times when, six. Times six. Yeah. So like you have over a million exposure. It's good exposure. Yeah, exposure across the internet, mm -hmm. and, and that's 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 amazing. 